Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, I'm playing the tier 10 French destroyer Kleber. Um, I just did a video about this, but the video that I did about this ship kind of talked about uh, how difficult it is to play in the current meta, at least in my opinion. And uh, the game that I uh, did the, re the replay analysis of the last was really kind of an outline. The game was uh, had had one battleship per side, no CV, and a lot of destroyers and subs and uh, cruisers, which doesn't happen all that often. This is a little bit more representative of what I would consider uh, what you're liable to see. In this game, I was fortunate that there was no CV to contend with, but you can see that each team has four battleships and four cruisers and four destroyers. So uh, this game allowed this ship to be played in the way that I think it was designed to be played. Now, you know, others may disagree and feel differently about the ship, but as far as I'm concerned, Clebert really needs to be played a little bit more like a cruiser than a destroyer. It doesn't have smoke, and I mean, you can't break line of sight. I guess really is what it boils down to. The smoke's strengths is our, our, well, legion. And everyone, well, most everyone knows what they are. Most importantly, you can break line of sight using smoke. Um, you can occasionally sit in smoke and daka daka, but with the proliferation of 12 kilometer radar, that's a little more challenging these days. But it can happen. And why did I throw the torpedoes there? Well, I can see where the. Uh, radio location or radio position finder indicator was pointing. And I thought, okay, maybe I can catch a DD on the north end of this cap who's going to try and get behind the island. Kind of doing the exact same thing I'm doing on the south side of the island. Get behind the island myself, find a little cover. And I have to be careful here because very often someone will run across ahead of where the Yamato is currently going. And I do, in fact, catch the Elbing. Land two torpedoes on him. He must have turned broadside to try and stay on the north end of the cap, and I just happened to catch him. Now, these torpedoes are fast, as I mentioned in the last replay. And they hit fairly hard. And I also have a fairly quick reload. You can see I've only got 16 seconds, and I will be back up again. Got uh, four racks, two on either side of the ship port and starboard, so you can get uh, you know, get torpedoes off pretty regularly. And there's the radar, and I'm just going to sit here and wait for the radar to go down, and now I'm going to try and get the heck out of Dodge. I don't want to sit here. I was really hoping Shimakaza would keep moving more, more in a straight line, but it's all right. We can scrape, we can scrape some paint. Between us, we managed to secure the cap, and since he is smoking, I'm going to slow right down here and try and take advantage of that smoke. Now you can see the Kitakaza where he's located. He's going to detect me, I think, if I fire. No, oh, I'm throwing in reverse. Just got me just out of line of sight. See if I can get some fires on the Vanguard. I also have to beware of Zao torpedoes. Now you see I did not use my reload booster there and that was because the Shima went behind the island and I didn't want to waste it. I mean I only got up a couple of volleys there. So it was nice of Shima to throw smoke, but that just invites a torpedo strike. If there's something out there, and Zao probably threw torpedoes. So I don't want to sit broadside. I don't want to run out there with Shima Kaza. That'll lead me broadside to the potential torpedo strike, and it'll also run me head into Japaya, Yamato, Vanguard, and Zao. Now you can see I've got a couple of my friends right here. I've got the Napoli and the Alsace. So I don't really have to stay here. I'll take advantage of the smoke while it's here. 
and then I think I'm gonna head for Bravo. Those are almost, without a doubt, the Zao torpedoes. The smoke is starting to vanish. So I need to get on the move. See the Shimakaze over there in the Bravo cab. There's an island between where I'm at and where the Shima's at. Our Alsace gets taken out by the torpedoes. Why he didn't see those in time, I don't know. I mean, you can see he was trying to turn, I guess, but uh, um, he had to know they were coming. So I've got Gearing and Shima here. I'm detected only for another few seconds. Now, I expect there'll be torpedoes coming, but we'll see. And maybe the speed of this ship can help me rush down one of these destroyers. Yeah, it looks like the fire I put on that battleship just stopped. So, you know, we're just shy of six minutes in, picked up 62,000 damage. Helped secure a cap. I'm going to call that good. And we've got a lot of ships on the one line right now. And that can be really bad if they don't start crossing. So my hope is that they will. I get detected, but uh, whoever it was. And now I know why I didn't see torpedoes gearing through them out toward the, the Bravo cap. Whoever it was opted to. Uh, Smoke up so that he didn't get shot at. And looks like he promptly ran. It's possibly still sitting in smoke, I guess. You gotta remember there are two DDs there, and that's why I think the RPF indicator was, or the radio location indicator was kind of jumping a little bit there. And I do catch the shot. So I've still got a gearing up here. But in a gunfight with a reload booster at the ready, I think I can handle the gearing. I know he just threw torpedoes. Takes a minute or so for them to reload. I don't want to push into the Zao and Kearsarge, Vanguard, etc. Looked like the gearing was probably in the alpha cap for a second. You could see that it started to turn a little bit. Now, right now, we're down three ships two battleships and a cruiser. The bad guys are down three destroyers and a cruiser. I managed to uh, get a lucky torpedo strike on the Elving by guessing where it would be using the radio location skill. And I did just take out the Shimikaze with a torpedo strike into the smoke. And that helps. Our Shimakaza and Groningen are, they're just about dead. Neither of them is really in a position to be able to take any chances. I'm still full health. I can certainly take some chances. And you can see that I've got a fire burning as my damage total continues to climb. Kearsar just continuing to run. Now, the torpedo range on this ship is about the same as what I've got set up as the detection range. So, Vanguard's about to get sunk. I can just continue to push this way. I'm going to push right toward the smoke. And I'm going to hope the gearing's going to sit in the smoke, but my guess is he's probably going to continue to run north. That's why I'm detected right now. He's running just ahead of his smoke. And... My hope is he's going to throw torpedoes at the Amalfi, but it's possible they'll come my way, so I want to stay relatively angled to the potential torpedo strike. So I might be able to maneuver between them should they be coming my way. Now you can see I was up there at 52 knots. Um, very, very fast ship. And he did throw the torpedoes at the Amalfi. And that's only one set. There's the second set. 
But now I can take advantage of his smoke. Probably should have loaded AP before I fired, but it's alright. Got it loaded now. He's slowing down. And I managed to finish off the Zhao. Switch back to HE. And I'm gonna hope I can run down the gearing, but we'll see. Now our Amalfi was taken out, which means the gearing is spotting me, Kearsarge has me, and his sights just kind of skirt, scoot around the edge of these torpedoes here and try to get the Kearsarge burning. There's one fire which he immediately repaired. He's a huge target. So I'm going to swing here to port and hope to get to where the gearing can't shoot me anymore. But he's, he's pretty smart and he's going to slow down and try and keep me in his sights. Trying to get a fire started on the Kearsarge again. But to no avail. Maybe get a shot up on the gearing here. Now, gearing knows that I'm running this way. He probably is guessing that I'm going to come around to, ahead of him and run him down. I've got a, a group of aircraft from the Kearsarge chasing after me. And so why am I running this way? Well, he's going to come into the Conqueror's AA bubble here in a second. Get my own AA going for all the good that's going to do me. I'm going to stop here. As I mentioned, Gearing's torpedoes reload pretty quickly. He could time this just right, and yep, if I had kept going, that probably would have been the end for me. Will there be another group of torpedoes? Mm. Guess when he hang, he held on to one group in the hope of getting the conqueror, but we'll see. I've got a reload booster ready. This game is almost over. At this point, it's really just mopping up. We've only lost five ships. The bad guys are down to four ships, and the gearing's going to be right here. I'll activate the reload booster. And I imagine the second set of torpedoes is probably going to be coming now. There they are. I'll just turn underneath them. His engine's gone, so these torpedoes of mine are going to absolutely wreck him. That's kill number four. And really, that's the game. I'll run forward here and get the guns going a little bit more, but uh, you know, this game's all, all but over. And I think this is really very, very fun. So if you're able to play this ship the way that it was designed, I think you're going to love it. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.